one thing that um, I like to give as advice because a lot of people are in different countries, so they have different laws that they need to follow and so on. The spam filters don't necessarily have, you know, one million different versions in order to make sure that, you know, they're allowing different things to happen in different countries. So I would always suggest following best practices the things that the inboxes want or the things that the users want, right? So they don't, they might have given you consent to send them emails, but they might not have given you consent to send them 25 emails a day. Um, they expect you to know what the user wants and the inbox is there to reduce spam. So one thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot more spam in the world than there are good emails. So it's a lot easier to compare your strategies to those who are not, you know, following best practices or actual spammers to other people in your industry. And it's important not to be looking at your inbox and saying, oh, look, Amazon can send 20 emails a day. Trust me, they have a whole team of people like us just worrying 24 seven, trying to figure it out. And they're probably sending emails that people are not getting. And so when you get up in the morning, you go in your inbox and you're really pissed at Target for sending you yet another email about diapers when you don't have a kid. Um, customers do the same thing. If you're selling mattresses and somebody bought them, um, they're not going to buy another mattress tomorrow. So you need to know what your customers want. And that's what the spam filters are expecting from you. They're not making your lives difficult on purpose. They're just, you're not their customer. The users of the inbox are.